The one and only Hank Williams Jr. joining us uh, in the studio. Woo! And uh, got uh, got the cigar rolling. We got uh, <laughs> this is like This is the tea. first time ever in the history of our show that anybody has ever said, is it okay if I smoke in here? And uh, no, it, he it, ain't, it ain't if it's okay. I'm going to smoke or I'm going to walk out the fucking door. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't him asked. Well, he didn't ask. His road manager no, asked I, me for oh, it. I'm sorry. I just, Icons don't ask. <laughs> yeah. Patrick, I came in here and I went. Icons tell. <laughs> yeah. I they said, don't ask. It's okay if uh, Bocephus smokes, right? And they went, listen, if Bocephus wants to smoke, he can smoke. I'm like, yeah. 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 Of course. I ain't going to argue with that. Absolutely, man. Mm -hmm. um, dudes can see you, man. Thank you for Somebody uh, for made the a time. mistake one time in New Jersey of telling uh, Bobby Kid Rock, my rebel son and me, we weren't going to smoke. <laughs> and some of his uh, Detroit assistants took care of that situation. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about uh, like didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna, Detroit assistant. By the way, they're going to smoke anything they want to smoke. Yeah. And after he squashed his feet, uh, yeah. the guy had to leave the building. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> congrats. I don't care them kind of people around with me. Oh, man. <laughs> dude, it's like, you got you to be happy. You got to live your life, man. Boy, you know? I'm, I'm real good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real, real good at that. It, isn't it the best, man? Where you, when you can like, it's like, it's like you want to do it, you do it. If yeah, you don't want to do it, you don't. When did you stop caring? Oh, I care a lot, believe me. No, but when did you stop caring about what other people, yeah, think about yeah. asking? When, uh, the uh, album uh, Friends, you know, mm -hmm. with good old Toy Caldwell and. Charlie Daniels and all. You know, basically from the time I was like eight years old, you know, go out there and, you know, sing, clone your daddy and do this, do your daddy, do that. And, uh, oh, by the way, a lot, of, a lot a, of people yawn. There was a guy show. here and <laughs> I had some problems back then and uh, did some pretty bad things to myself, I guess. And he said, well, I'm going to put it in a nutshell for you. He said, I'm just going to tell you like it is. He said, you've been taught to look like, act like, be like Hank Williams Sr. exactly, and they've done a damn good job. And, uh, you know, your poor father passed away at 29, and looks like you're going to beat him. You'll, be, you'll have it done by 26. Mm. And he looked me right in the eye, and that's what he said. That's the day I quit. Wow. That's when we started doing uh, After Friends, you know, I'm not going to sit here and open the mailbox and, you know, live off of daddy's royalties. I got my own damn mm -hmm. royalties, my man. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, it kind of happened with great friends like the Allman Brothers that yours truly was opening for, mm -hmm. Marshall Tucker Band. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go on down the list of names. If, if anybody knows, they know. Yeah. So Uncle Cracker and Kid Rock were 14 years old, sitting in the audience the first time they saw me. <laughs> Bobby said, man, you are the blackest white guy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> said, Did you tear some kind of blues down? And they were 14. Well, that's the beautiful thing about this that new album, too. Thing. This yeah. new album is crazy good. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I was, so I, I honestly thought that. Have you heard it? Yeah, I have. Then I, I have. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, yeah. I have. Uh, because I was a huge fan. I say huge. I want to say I am a huge fan of Almera Club. I thought that was the pinnacle, but mm -hmm. it has been. Oh, this it has you been beat usurped. It. You beat it. And yeah. I didn't think that would ever be possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is it. This new album mm -hmm. is, it's crazy sick, y'all. This is. I'm going to put it in a nutshell. This is little Randall Hank Jr. sitting down here at 4916 Franklin Road in Mama's house with his Jimmy Reed records and Bobby Blue Bland and John Lee Hooker and his little bitty dude, do 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 And he's like 12 and 13 years old. And there's one big difference. He ain't 13 no more. <laughs> <laughs> and every one of those cats that I talk about, you do your homework. I played with every one of those cats. Mm -hmm. John Lee, 
What a gentleman B.B. King was. What a gentleman. Oh, my goodness. That is some excellent guitar you're playing. <laughs> what, a, what a gentleman. What? Wow. What a gentleman. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, we Ray have... Charles, and I'm cutting down on a little. He said, wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. Is that you? I said, yeah. Where'd you learn that? I said, oh, a guy named Lightning Hopkins. He said, oh, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. Uh, the it, al- it's all fun. You can tell that. Uh, uh, yeah. The new album's called uh, Rich White Hunky Blues. It's uh, it's available, and you can – we have it on album. Yeah, we Patrick have it on vinyl. We're going to listen to yes. it. We're going to play it. They on, still make that? Yes. yes. Yeah. I bought it right yes. here. You paid, down. You paid yeah. for it. Uh, they we still make vinyl. Yeah, and uh, we'll do that. The one and only Bo Stevens, Hank Williams Jr. is uh, in the studio. We'll come back, talk more uh, with him next. Hang on. <laughs> Hank Williams uh, Jr. is joining us in the studio. Uh, he's got this uh, new album out called Rich White Honky Blues. We've can, got it on album. Can I show you the vinyl? Look at the vinyl. Look at the vinyl. The That's vinyl. That's limited like edition. That this you, yeah. looks oh, like a bowling ball. That costs ball. extra, huh? Yeah. This, mm-hmm. is a beautiful, yes. this is the most beautiful album I've ever seen in my life. I'm almost reluctant to play this on our it record player. Wow, it is. It Look is, at that. Have that. you never seen it? It is show? It's a, cute. It is pretty. It it's like a black like a and ball. gold finish. It, it looks, looks like, like a, a, one of my Grammy or uh, <laughs> yeah. <Three Amanda. laughs> no, it does. It, it does. I bought that at, at the show you did uh, at the American Legion Hall where you played the whole album. Mm. So that was a special limited edition. And uh, uh, y'all, Hank. So, uh, it Bobby, was real. You <laughs> have this. Uh, uh, so have you heard this on vinyl? You haven't heard it on vinyl yet. No, I ain't heard it on vinyl. Um, you ready? I've been you listening you to it all. You know, I'm the guy that kind of put this thing together, me and Dan, brother. Uh, well, this, I have heard it. <laughs> this, But you haven't heard it on vinyl. It's no, different. It's, it's, it. it's different. Uh, is uh, it? Yeah, I think so. It's got the crackle. It's oh. So like Run DMC, right? Like, yeah, it sounds yeah, just yeah, like Run DMC. Reverend Run, if he was here, he could that quicker, 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 quicker. I don't give a shit don't about do that. Don't do that, Bubba. I, I you don't know give tempted. a shit about that. You know I'm tempted. I love Run DMC, but I don't give a shit about bouncing the record up there. <laughs> oh, yeah, listen to this. Um, baby, where'd you stay last night? You got your hair all matted and you ain't talking Oh. So, tell us about these guys who are playing on this. They're the A-team, brother. You know, when this thing came down, Ken said, you know, you want to make this blues album? I said, well, uh, you know, I don't know about that. And he said, well, you know, Dan really knows how you can get into that stuff and play that stuff. And I said, oh, you know, I don't know. Dan who? <laughs> so, he said, you know, I don't know no damn Dan, you know. Yeah. I, you got to remember, guys, I grew up in a house that's got Elvis Presley, Fat Domino, and Jerry Lee Lewis standing in there at my daddy's piano, and I'm a little boy. So it takes God, a hell of a the... lot to impress me. Yeah. <laughs> How does that ruin your Johnny whole Cash, brain? Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, oh every – yeah, I mean, Audrey Williams, was, that was a big – Thing people came to and they visit like, yeah they would pay homage the widow to, yeah. of Hank Williams and visit his house and you know well oh well why would they be over there you want to know why look up the albums Ray Charles your cheating heart of uh, Fat Domino Jumbo La Jerry Lee Lewis come on that's why the hell they were over there that's right the epicenter <laughs> they at the epicenter so that's what I kind of grew up in and man Fat Domino. What a wonderful person. Uh, Fats Domino is one of uh, the wonderful m- person. My mom and dad, when they were dating back in the day, that's who they would go see. Oh, so, yeah. like, I'll play uh, every once in a while, I'll be at their house and I'll just throw on some Fats Domino songs yep. and they'll get up and dance. I'm like, that's the coolest thing. Well, it's hard for a lot of people to imagine, but there was a place in town here called the Hippodrome. That was the arena. Little Hank Jr. is maybe 12, 13, and he's sitting there right in the front with his nanny and all watching Fat Domino. That's crazy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> that was some kind of special. Who's your, who's your, like, uh, who's your A team for you? Like, you're like, okay, uh, I need 
I need five heavies. Huh? Five heavies. Five people. You're like the best of the this best. This is it. This Wait, is who I'm rolling well, we'll into war with, with. We'll start with Waylon Jennings. Mm hmm. We'll start there. And uh, at what he does, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, Troy Caldwell, um, Greg Allman. That's a pretty good list. Pretty good, yeah, list. good. <laughs> pretty good list. Pretty good list. That's a pretty good list. And there's <laughs> no, one other guy I might want to remember called Hank Williams. Oh, I heard of him. Like the original rockabilly guy. Yeah. yeah he was it. Legs going all over the place, you know, and oh wiggling around and all that stuff. Several years before Elvis. Elvis. Yeah. Okay, now, now I'm going to start to geek out a little bit. He was bit. the honky-tonk, sharp-dressed, <laughs> rambling man. Mm-hmm. I think Ken Burns called him the hillbilly Shakespeare. He, and that's oh yeah, a really good, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Uh, it's The uh, 26-year-old wor- wrote words like he wrote of, well, just pick one out, you know. Mm-hmm. Cold, cold heart. The I funeral. Mean, any, yeah. Men with broken hearts. Uh, uh, be careful of stones that you throw. 26-year-olds writing those words? Yeah. <laughs> Who is that brave girl so sweet, uh, crushed by the automobile? Oh, that's the bad girl that lived down the street. How, how do and that song is deep, deep, deep. Do you think it's because people aged faster? Like, they grew up fast. I mean, we coddle children nowadays. He was one of one. You, you think he was so he far was ahead? one of one. Yeah, mm-hmm. broke the mold. Mm-hmm. One of one. But how does that? I don't care if it's the Rolling Stones. I don't care who you sit with. You mentioned his name. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> what did you? <laughs> just like that. <laughs> what did you think the first time you read Christopherson's lyrics to "If You Don't Like Hank Williams"? Oh, I thought it. Oh, yeah, I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that recording yeah. is, is, is. Me and him are pretty close. Oh, I bet. When, that, that's I've one of the best songs ever. I've got a song called "The Eyes of Waylon," and he said, "Man, <laughs> that is some kind of song." The eyes of Waylon is something else. He said, I, that, that was really good. I said, why, well, thank you, Brother Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe, I can't imagine being. Uh, you got like Willie said, Nelson sitting there and saying, man, hey, Brother Hank, uh, <laughs> I really like Old Habits, man. That's one of the greatest songs I've ever heard. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, you want a little pull? I said, uh, no, nah, you got any cigars on here? He said, <laughs> Yeah, he said, I do. And I said, you want to go hunting with me sometime, Willie, or fishing? And he said, no. He's not a big guy. He said, I don't really get into that, Brother Hank. <laughs> he, he's not going to be hitting a... Uh, I can't uh, see him up on the mountainside. Oh, uh, white tail. Hunting and, no. 300 yards away with a Springfield uh, World War One. There rifle. you go. Uh, all right, uh, the one and only Bo Sevis, Hank Williams Jr. is with us. The uh, new album, it's out, and uh, you need to get it. It's called Rich White Honky Blues. Coming back with uh, Bo Sevis next. Hank. Hank Williams Jr. in the studio, uh, Rich White Honky Blues is with us. And, Hank, I must tell you, I apologize. Uh, you have an absolute stalker who is sitting to your left here. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't call me a stalker. A, I'm a, a stalker. I'm a- a st- stalker, stalker. Yeah. yeah, this this one. Mm. I you have to watch. That's, I am a super fan. You know, I've already had a stalker, <laughs> and I'm talking real. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the FBI came and got his ass in right outside of Missoula, Montana. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> he ain't stalking no more. <laughs> That's a good he ain't stalking no <laughs> more. He ain't stalking no, no more. more. He's um, in. The, he's in the jailhouse now. <laughs> 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 so no, okay. but Patrick has been like your biggest uh, cheerleader okay. for years. We we the conversation around here was how was oh my god how was we gonna go Hank there? Williams Jr. not in the Hall of Fame? I went to the Hall of Fame ten well, years that ago. Was Twenty years ago. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Yes. I went to the Hall of Fame ten years ago and was looking with my three year old daughter for the for all the plaques of the people we love. There's Hank. All right, that's good. There's a, oh, where's Bo Cephas? Let's find Bo Cephas. I know. And so I started the Facebook page, uh, Get Hank in the Hall. We became the rallying cry. We've been talking about it to anyone who would listen for was, the last. And you know what the number decade. one thing people would say? They would say, what? He's not people in? People didn't know. Yeah, that, you're exactly right. That's yeah. what they say. 
That's not possible. Yeah, what? But and that was 20 years ago. That's not possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy, you know, introduced Monday Night Football for 31 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the a, guy wrote Family Tradition. That's it. Stamp, That's the end. He put a stamp on America, <clears throat> seven it. Super Bowls. What? 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 Yeah. He, that can't be. You well, know what? Uh, we were. I never, I never give it one thought. <laughs> Yeah. Not a thought. You did cost me some money, though, at the ceremony because I had money on whether or not you were going to light a cigar on stage, and you didn't, and I, and that cost me 50 yeah, but bucks, I, but that's okay. When I was sitting in the front row, I had it going the whole time. <laughs> I know. Did, did you? Did you notice did. that? Did you? Shit, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I didn't notice. But you were so gracious. I love whoever the cat was that wrote the thing up here. He's, he said, you know, the people before him talked for 27 minutes and then blah, blah, blah. And he said he went up there and he was there exactly one minute and 30 <laughs> seconds or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. This is my <laughs> family tradition and walked off the stage. That's exactly right. Okay, so <laughs> if you will indulge me just for a minute, Mr. Bocephus. Can I call you Bocephus? <laughs> Mr. Watch Bocephus it, yeah. sounds great. Thunderhead. Um, Thunderhead! Actually, okay, I want to. I just want to tell you this. I, when I was 15 years old, I didn't have a lot of friends, and I grew up listening to Bo Cephas music with my older brothers. Yeah. And uh, on the first day, y'all of school, probably had some illegal beer in your you, car. We did in Louisiana. We had a lot of that. Yeah, I figured uh, you did. Uh, <laughs> I was. I, it was the first day of school in the 10th grade, and the few friends I had had a different <coughs> lunch schedule than me because we all had it separated. So I was sitting by myself at this t- long table, mm-hmm. and a guy came up and sat down next to me. He was six foot three with long blonde hair and earrings, is the scariest dude I saw that day. And he hmm. sat right next to me, and I thought he was going to steal my lunch money. Hmm. He was a German exchange student. Hmm. And he, he looked at me and said, may I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. He said, I'm told there is an American song, and the lyrics are, there is a tear in my beer because I'm crying for you, dear. Yep. Is this real, or are people making fun of me? And I said, no. That's real. Boy, is it real. <laughs> that's Bo Cephas and Hank Sr. That's the that's Boy, the is it real. <laughs> that guy is my best friend. We've been friends for almost 30 years. We, well, He was the best man in my wedding. I was the best man in his. And our whole friendship started with him asking me if that song was real and me bringing a cassette to school the next day with There's a Tear in My Beer on it. And so I, I knew you were coming in, and I went, and these are brand new, unopened, mint They were copies. unopened. They were they unopened. Were. I'm <laughs> opening them. Now you ruined I'm them. I'm ruining them. I don't care. These are uh, Hank Williams' Greatest Hits Volume 3 that has Patrick. There's a Tear in My Beer on it. Are you, are you about to ask him to sign I'm gonna them? I'm going to ask him if he'll, Hank, before he, he leaves. Hank, he's quivering. I what am, a hillbilly. I'm shaking a little bit. What a hillbilly. What a redneck. What a backwoods. I bought, I bought what brand a Bo Cephas freak. <laughs> Patrick's entire friendship oh with someone God. is based on Bo Cephas, so you're going to have him sign the I'm going to have him sign these records, if he will, before he leaves. The yeah. other part of that story is that for years I told him that there were other words to family tradition that aren't on the record. Mm. And so he knew the alternate lyrics that uh-huh. we would sing between right, the yeah, verse right. the chorus. Yeah. But uh, he didn't think that was where he thought that was just something I made up. So to when get we drunk, were yeah, to get laid. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, we were uh, the first time we were old enough to go to a bar and I paid the guys in the band to play that song. And the whole bar started singing to get drunk. He yeah. cried. He didn't know that was real. <laughs> so that started at Billy Bob. Did it? That's what they told me. You That's know. <laughs> Do you, yeah, you kind of all over the country. The, Who the, knows? Yeah, you kind of encourage the crowd now to. I don't have to. They know it. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit there and hold the mic, and they're gonna answer. Oh yeah. That, oh yeah. It don't I've matter. Been to those shows. It don't matter if you're in Syracuse, New York, where I set the record at the New York State Fair in Syracuse, New York, on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. 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 Both safe ain't all about Atlanta and and uh, New Orleans. Uh, upstate New York. It don't matter where it is, brother. It don't matter. It could be in it Germany. Don't matter. You go to Germany. Yeah. Don't yeah. matter. Be the real <laughs> Billings, Mr. Montana, Deadwood, South Dakota. Look up the Grand Forks, North Dakota, about a week ago. Read that article. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of like Muhammad Ali when I walk out there, brother. <laughs> God, I'm uh, really charged up and ready to rock. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm doing maybe. 23 shows this year, something like that. I don't do 140 like these four. But don't worry, I've been there. Yeah. I did 255 oh, yeah. one year. What? Jeez. That's living in a bus. 
That's no life, man. That's living in a bus. <laughs> uh, Hank Williams Jr., the, the new one's called White, Rich White Honky Blues. It's out now. You can get it, and we'll talk more with uh, Bo Cephas. Coming up next. Hang on. Bo Cephas is with us, uh, smoking cigars, just uh, chilling out, uh, enjoying the uh, conversation. Uh, it's a real honor for us. Thank you for taking the time. We are you really it. enjoying it? Yeah, we really? are. Oh, yeah. More yeah, than you. We have wanted this to I happen. I guess you can tell I am. I'm totally <laughs> elated. <Yeah. laughs> is this, can you, you know, tell, this, the can crazy you tell thing I'm is, glowing? Is, pretty obvious. <laughs> this seems like he, this when would be both. Can I glowing. get out of here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we understand. <laughs> What's funny it. is I'm related. You know what though? If you're you got a day full of interviews, this is this isn't so bad. Oh, uh, <laughs> this could be downhill from here. Trust me. <laughs> You'll be talking yeah, to people. Probably is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So this album is. I mean, it's a blues album. It's a it's a tip of the hat to to music that some people like. Honestly, people who listen to you know country music nowadays, they don't really realize that the blues were such a huge influencer on modern country music. Well, what we've done is come full circle. I have written letters of daddy's mother uh, about this gentleman named Rufus Payne. That's T-Tot, T-tot. the street singer in Montgomery. We can't, we don't have any money but we can give you food or anything uh, to pay for uh, little Hiram's guitar lessons. That's pretty special stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's one recorded interview of Hank Sr. And the guy says, well, Hank, uh, have you ever had any formal music training? (laughs) Yeah, he leaned me, he said, no, I got all the training I ever needed from T Tot. So now it's kind of run full circle. All those guys that helped me, John Lee, Lightning, BB King, same thing. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. There would be no jazz, there'd be no Louis Armstrong, mm-hmm. there'd be no country. Nope. There'd certainly be no rock and roll. There'd be nothing without that original old blues stuff. Yeah. That started it all. Yeah. And it's and I, if you think if you really listen to some of daddy's like a honky tonk blues, you talking about rocking, man. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. Yeah. That is some kind of blues. Uh, so how many good. songs <clears throat> did he write that said blues, you know? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, quite a few. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Surprised pa- Patrick doesn't know it off the top of his head. <laughs> I don't. But I, oh. a I also love. Uh, Tell me them uh, who's uh, producing this? Uh, Dan uh, Arbat. Black Keys. Yeah. From the Black Keys. Yes, oh, yeah. it's got it's such a great super guy. We all understood each other in about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. He's also brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. He understands uh, how audio sounds. The mic. Yeah. The, it understands all of. Gets it. Uh, mm-hmm. get, put in a certain mood and a feel to a, a track. And he so also good. understood nobody produces me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do some of my own producing, Mr. Producer. <laughs> Move <laughs> over. That, that's when he, uh, that's when <laughs> it's like putting a, uh, you know, chocolate syrup in a milkshake and mixing it up and go together. We all learned that in about five minutes after we started at first. Uh, Who's I want was you it? to play this, you do that. And Dan said, hey, I want y'all. He went out and got the mic. Da, da, da. All right, you play this, I play the, I, I'll play this lick here, boom. Whose idea was it to do the overmodulated microphones to sound? I don't know. He is, I guess. Well, whatever that is. What the that, hell is an overmodulated microphone? Like, That's one of them big words. <laughs> it's a little distortion. Oh, uh, so good. He is, I guess. Sounds so good. I've been known for a little distortion for a while. Uh, <laughs> Troy yeah, Caldwell just... played really loud, <laughs> and so does I. You are a distorted man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you for sure are. Uh, I am. Man, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Uh, the good. album is can called. Can I leave now? You can. Rich White Bye. Monkey Blues. <laughs> <laughs> Bo Seavis, everybody. Give it up. Yeah. Mr. Hank Williams, Jr. Woo. Hey, if you like that video, go ahead, like, subscribe, click the bell. You yeah. know. You have been told what to do. Do it.